How's it going, everybody? Um, I just wanted to to make this video. I uh, was talking about chain sharpening, and I'm gonna have several videos on on chain sharpening coming up here. And uh, I'm working on this one chain right here, and I, I wanted to point out something that um, maybe a lot of people don't know, and it's your your top plate angle of your uh, your cutter teeth um, there's a few different angles in here but for the top plate which is your your cutting surfaces there are two there's the angle that the edge is up underneath this plate and there's this angle right here of the of the tooth where the cutting edge is that angle there all right uh, standards usually around 30 to 35 degrees um, generally works pretty well um, the angle up underneath there is determined by what type of cutting edge or cutter teeth you're using so if you're using chisel chain, you're generally going to have anywhere from a 5 to 10 degree tilt on that edge to, to get it to come to that really razor sharp point that the chisel chains have. Now what I have here is a big 404 chipper chain. Now. The chipper chains is completely on the opposite side of the spectrum as the the chisel chains are, because the chipper chain has a really shallow uh, grind angle of around 20, 25 degrees. Now what that does is it gives it a much blunter edge. I mean it's sharp because it cuts wood obviously, but it's not nearly as sharp so it doesn't cut as fast as these chisel chains the advantage is you don't have to sharpen these as much because the blunter edge stays sharper longer than these chisel chain edges these almost razor sharp edges on the chisel chains so your manufacturer I apologize for the crazy camera work uh, your manufacturer kind of have have guidelines as to what their you know what they set preset these angles at but they can be changed at any point in time tailored to what types of wood you're cutting if you're cutting softwoods if you're cutting spruce and pine and stuff like that like up north generally these full chisel chains are definitely the way to go they're much faster and since you're in soft woods, it's not going to dull uh, as quickly as it would in hardwoods. Now, down in the south, where I live in Louisiana, the not you know the majority of what we're cutting up is seasoned red oak, white oak, hickory, ash, stuff like that, which is really hard. is really hard on these chisel teeth, um, these full chisel and. Um, round chisel and square chisel teeth. Uh, these chippers and semi chisels generally hold an edge longer in the harder or dirtier stuff so you know I may have a few of these chains lying around and I'll have a few of these semi chisel chains or these chisel chains that have the edge reset to about 25 degrees so that way it keeps its edge a little longer so when you're sharpening you don't necessarily have to keep the manufacturer spec you can change it to suit um, what types of wood you're cutting which is exactly what I'm doing to this chain it, this chain was really rough I'm trying to salvage as much of it as I can but I'm going from about uh, let's see this angle here, which is around 30 something, 30, 35 degrees, 
to 25 degrees here. So that way, um, when I'm cutting hardwood, uh, it won't dull nearly as fast. And when you reset your angles, you pretty much have to have a file guide. Um, the guide is going to allow you to set the angles accurately. So when you're in the field and you need to touch them up, it'll be easier to, to keep that angle as opposed to just trying to freehand it. You know, if you freehand it, trying to reset those angles, I'm not saying it can't be done, but the majority of us, it's probably gonna end up cutting crookeder than a dog's back leg. So, uh, those, it's always nice to have a file guide lying around so you can do stuff like that. But, you know, that's, that's just my two cents on sharpening chains, so. Uh, I hope it was informative. Um, another thing is your ripping chains generally have a top plate angle of about 10 degrees. So it's probably, it's almost straight para perpendicular to the edge over here. Um, so that way it holds its edge longer while milling. Um, uh, that way it doesn't dull as much and it, it doesn't take as much of a bite. You know, you're already putting an extreme load on the saw by milling in general and you don't need it to take a, a gargantuan bite like these chisel chains would. So it, it, it's slow, but it's efficient. You know, um, it took them a long time to, to, to figure out that 10 degrees was the way to go. Some people even run zero degrees, so straight perpendicular, but um, there's a major consensus that 10 degrees is the, the best top plate angle for ripping on your mills. So, well, I hope this was helpful. Um, I enjoy making these little videos trying to you know pass along some of the knowledge that I've gained while doing this so um, hopefully I was able to help somebody out until next time